I like scary movies, and I have ever since I was a little kid. It always puzzled me when I met someone who said they didn't like scary movies because it just seemed so obvious to me that they were cool. But I'll be frank, it's just as weird to me when I meet someone who says they're never frightened by scary movies, some kind of bravado, I'm brave, I'm not scared by them. I say, well, why would you want to see them then? It's like going to see a comedy if you aren't going to laugh in it. It just doesn't make sense. So, I like scary movies. Yes, they still scare me. That's sort of the point, or at least they creep me out. Depends on the movie. And obviously, I also really like Lovecraft. But Lovecraft stories are notoriously difficult to adapt to film. Here's some of the reasons. First, his stories are almost always from a first-person narrator point of view. That is not impossible to do in a film, but it's harder. Usually you don't want to be behind one guy's eyes the whole time. You want to have other guys talking, interacting, things like that. It's just more difficult. Second, he doesn't have a lot of interpersonal relationships in his stories. A lot of the action goes on inside the guy's mind. In fact, a lot of the action happens being described to the viewer or happening off screen or somewhere else. He doesn't see it, he just knows about it or imagines it. He has stories where uh, a lot of the things are taking place by letters, such as the Call of Cthulhu. He has the story of the Mountain of Madness, or a great deal of the story is people walking down a long dark tunnel looking at cartouches drawn on the wall. That's not going to work in a, in a film uh, environment. You need to have more kinds of action. It works fine for what Lovecraft was doing. He doesn't think about them cinematically. He just is trying to get the feeling of horror into the viewer. And that's what he does great. He also has a lot of monsters that, as he says, are indescribable or hard to film. Uh, for example, while a fish frog monster can be scary and can be made scary even in a movie, it was hard enough for Brian Yuzna when he filmed Dagon to make a fish frog thing look good that he went for tentacles instead. Doesn't hurt the movie Dagon, but it shows that he had to modify Lovecraft to make it on screen look the right way. Reading the story, reading about the fish frog things, their scaled skins and their pop eyes and their psoriasis or whatever growing over them is creepy, harder to film. So let's go deeper into this. What is Lovecraftian? Well, Lovecraft wrote about a really wide range of topics. He wrote stories about ancestral memory. He wrote stories about cannibalism. He wrote stories about alien invasions. He wrote stories about hard science fiction. He even had a story about a guy who had sex with a gorilla. So, what is Lovecraftian? Well, it's not necessarily easy to define. All his stories have in common is that they're all creepy. He does have the concept that the universe is a cold, uncaring place, that science is what's going on, not religion, not myth, and that ancient myths and things have power in the modern age. All these are ideas we can adapt. The good news is, though Lovecraft's stories are hard to adapt, I mean, look at Whisperer in Darkness. Most of it is either letters or a guy talking to another person in a dark room while he's muttering. You know, it doesn't really work in a film, although, uh, we have done a film that, uh, there has been a good film that uh, used that premise. <clears throat> but his ideas of alien horror, uh, natural laws being violated, uh, universes slopping over into our own, these are absolutely adaptable to a movie. So, what we're going to talk about here is how to have a Lovecraftian movie not based on one of Lovecraft's stories. And the easiest way to do this is I'm going to list and talk about a bunch of movies, hopefully ones you haven't seen. You can go look up and get your Lovecraft buzz on film and have fun. So, first, let's talk about a small, uh, low-budget indie film from 2011 called Absentia. This is a very Lovecraftian movie. I'm not talking about the TV series Absentia. 2011, no budget uh, movie. It's about the interaction of another realm and a creature in that realm with our realm. It's solid. I liked it. Parts of it scared me and were creepy. I think you will like it too. 
One of my favorite directors is Lucio Fulci, and he did a movie about a mad scientist. Lovecraft often had mad scientists, guys doing things especially with body horror. And House by the Cemetery is a terrific example of this. At first you think it's like a haunted house, and then you think it's something else, and then you find out there's a mad scientist involved, and it just keeps getting worse and more gruesome. And he awesomely, Fulci that is, in House by the Cemetery, never really explains all the details of what's going on. You have to figure it out for yourself, which I love, because that's so rare in modern movies, to be able to use your brain for a change. This movie's scary, it's got creepy action, it's got a mad scientist of sorts. The experiences have gone way too far down the dark path. I think you'll like it. There's quite a recent movie called The Ritual. Now, I especially like this movie because the art in it, or the creature in it was designed by an artist I know and love, Keith Thompson. It takes place in Norway. People are going up into the woods to do a little ritual for their friend. Not a magical ritual, just like, in honor of our friend, we're going to do this thing. And hijinks happen. I won't spoil any of it for you. It's got ancient horrors coming to the modern age, which is a very Lovecraftian theme. Uh, and, and again, it's like... It not always explained, just like in Lovecraft stories, so go with that. The Ritual, I think in 2017. A lot of you have probably already hit onto this movie. It's called The Void. It's about medical experiments and Lovecraftian things and a monster or a god or it's kind of shub-niggerathy sort of action. Uh, so I'm a little more hesitant about talking about this one because you may have seen it or heard of it or be excited about it. If you haven't though, check it out. The Void. Great Lovecraftian style movie with Lovecraftian drama and, uh, and, and, and his themes. I think you'll find it effective. In the year 1959, my favorite horror director, Mario Bava, did a movie called Kaltiki, The Immortal Monster. This movie is the first movie to have what you'd want to call real found footage. It's not a found footage movie. The found footage part is like three minutes, but it's there and it's uh, effective, and the monster is an awful Lovecraft-like blob thing, and it's related to like past history and ancient times, and a comma, the stars are right, and it's rising, and it's full of great stuff. It ends with a spectacular battle on a, as this house is being devoured by the blob monsters. The monsters themselves are one of the best Shoggoth-like things I've ever seen in a movie. 1959, Kaltiki, the immortal monster. Mario Bava really is one of the greats of horror, fan, uh, of horror uh, movie making. He also did a film, and don't laugh at the name, it's called Planet of the Vampires. But, trust me, there's no vampires in this thing. It's, it is outer space, a, a spaceship of humans goes to a foreign world, and they find alien parasites and horrors from the past, and all kinds of things are going on. The dead are rising, it's... This movie scared me so much as a kid that I actually tried to hide under the seat in the theater. It was, it was appalling me. May not be as effective for you now, it is from the 1960s, but it's got great stuff and it's a very gothic seeming science fiction thing, kind of the way Lovecraft seemed to make science fiction. The spaceships have these huge cathedral metal interiors. Uh, there's a wrecked alien spaceship which, it, which with uh, giant dead alien corpses and, uh, and then there's the parasites on the planet that are causing trouble. I really think this is a wonderful movie. It's one of my go-to movies to show people what, what a great science fiction movie could be like before the advent of Star Wars. Not saying that Star Wars is bad, but you know, it did change science fiction forever. So, Planet of the Vampires. Check it out. And don't worry about the title. It's a great movie. Also, from 1959, the same year as Kaltiki, we have Angry Red Planet. This is an American-made science fiction movie with this weird process, but most, which is basically intended to mask the fact that the backgrounds are paintings. And we go to Mars, and it's hostile. I call it Lovecraftian because the monsters are really terrifying and creepy, and because one of the uh, great monsters is this huge Shoggoth thing that rises from a lake with a spinning eyeball on top. It's fabulous. The movie's only about an hour long. It's highly entertaining and it has an alien world that doesn't function like Earth. It's like we go to space and Lovecraft's waiting for us. 1959 of all times, Angry Red Planet. There was a movie that came out recently that did so badly in the theaters 
that it nearly tanked the uh, company that made it, and that's Slither. You may or may not have heard of this movie. It's again an alien invasion with a Lovecraftian creature, and following Lovecraft's some of Lovecraft's concepts, the alien creature over as you're watching it, you eventually start realizing it has a very logical, well, not logical, it has a very well shown off life cycle. It has a structure of things it does, different casts it produces. It, it, it uh, reproduces entirely by using humans as part as hosts. Another advantage of uh, Slither, practical effects, not digital. Uh, I liked it a lot. I think it's a shame that it didn't do well in the theaters, but I think that you will enjoy it if you haven't seen it already or heard of it. Another modern movie, Harbinger Down, with Lance Henriksen getting eaten by a monster. This movie has uh, practical effects, and it's loathsome tardigrade monsters from the sea. It's uh, uh, not super high budget, but the practical effect monsters are really great, and I just love, I gotta give it up for Lance Henriksen every time he appears. And the movie is uh, solid, it takes place on a ship in the cold, Ar Lovecraft tend to set a lot of his dramas where it was cold because he didn't like the cold, so he made his movies, not his movies, he wrote his stories uncomfortable places for him to be because it made him uncomfortable, he thought it would make us uncomfortable, and it does, if only because he writes about it in a creepy way, the 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 biting cold, the, the terror of the frozen waste around him, he's uh, big on that. And so uh, Harbinger Down has that too, they're in the Arctic Sea and there's these things breaking loose, eating everyone that are scary. Uh, I think you would like that one. I did. And the final movie I want to bring to your attention is The Manster. And this is from 1959 too. I mean, what the heck is up with 1959? We have Angry Red Planet from America. We have Kaltiki the Immortal Monster from Italy. And now we have The Manster from Japan. And The Manster has some very Lovecraftian elements to it that I have stolen in my scenarios numerous times. I won't spoil it for you at all, except to say that there is in fact a mad scientist and he's, uh, he's pretty mad. And there's a hero who is also a villain and there is all kinds of interesting things going on. Uh, while there's not zombies, I would say it's one of the closest movies in spirit to Lovecraft's original uh, Herbert West reanimator with the kind of things that are happening. So I really liked it. So these are 10 movies I've brought up that are all Lovecraftian from ranging from 1959 up to the modern age and weren't scripted by Lovecraft, but use his ideas and themes that he had. There's lots of other movies like this. I focus on some that are a little more obscure. I think that you will like them as I did and uh, check them out. See how Lovecraft has influenced all of our works since his time just by the fact of his spreading his values by correspondence with other horror writers such as Robert Block, uh, August Derleth, Robert E. Howard. I mean, Robert E. Howard wasn't just horror, but he wrote horror as well. And other guys by his uh, w widespread publications in the American Press Amateur Press Association, where he ran his own things. He was interested in science. He did. He was. He spread his ideas to other authors vigorously, and that's one of the reasons that Lovecraft's footprint is so large on the modern horror world. Almost every modern horror author tries to define himself either by imitating some of Lovecraft's ideas or by distancing himself from them. Either way, Lovecraft's defining them, and that's pretty cool, I think.